Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to earnings conference call of JM Financial Limited to discuss the performance for quarter and half year ended September 2023. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And I'll hand the conference over to Mr. Vishal Kampani. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of JM Financial, we extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the conference call to discuss our financial results both for the second quarter and half year ended FY24. We have uploaded our results uh, and as well as our press release on the website and stock exchanges. And I hope you all have had a chance to go through the same. I will take you through the brief highlights uh, and then Nishit, our group CFO, will take you through the numbers uh, in detail. I'm happy to report that we had our highest ever quarterly revenue number in the history of the firm for quarter ended uh, September 2023. Uh, the revenues were at of 1,214 crores, and uh, this performance was backed by uh, the, uh, the, the fees as well as the commission and brokerage business, uh, both from the advisory business and investment banking, as well as our wealth businesses, as well as our platform AWS businesses, as well as the distribution that we've been able to do on the ECM and DCM side. Uh, a big congratulations to that business for this outstanding performance. We have also seen an increase in uh, interest income from some of our new initiatives and new businesses that we have built in the last five years, namely the retail mortgage business, which covers uh, all of the home loans and the loan against property to MSME, to MSME customers, uh, as well as the financial institutions financing business where we fund uh, you know, uh, uh, NBFCs who are rated lower than us. Uh, on, the, on the mortgage lending side, on the wholesale side, uh, as per the earlier guidance given, uh, we have taken additional uh, 126 crores of provisioning, and I think we are almost done with uh, the provisioning cycle for the uh, wholesale mortgage business. Uh, after this, uh, I think we will, we will start seeing normalized profits, uh, and I must say that the, uh, the performance of the of the wholesale mortgage book, the new book continues to be exemplary uh, and uh, it's doing very, very well. Uh, with this, uh, I would hand over to Nishit to uh, take you through uh, some of our numbers for the quarter as well as the half year. Nishit. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, our consolidated revenue for the half year ended at 524 stood at 2,295 crores a rise of 36% year on year. For the same period, profit after tax stood at 361 crores, which is an increase of 3% year on year. This represents an earnings per share of rupees 3.8 versus rupees 3.7 for half year FI23. In Q2 FI24, our revenue stood at rupees 1,214 crores. The increase is across fees, commission, brokerage, and interest income. Pre-provisioning profit for quarter ended September 2023 stood at rupees 405 crores, an increase of 17% year on year. We have taken provisions of rupees 126 crore in our wholesale model. So, sorry to interrupt you. So there is a slight distortion in the line. Is it better? Yes, sir. Profit before tax for quarter two FI24 is at rupees 278 crore, which is a decline of 13% year on year, and a profit after tax, after non-controlling interest for quarter two FI24 increased by 8% year on year from rupees 180 crore to rupees 195 crores. As on September 30, 2023. The net worth excluding minority interest is at rupees 8,364 crores, which translates into a book value of rupees 87.6 per share. 
our consolidated loan book stood at rupees 15808 crores up by 8% year on year we have diversified our loan book over the last 3 4 years across several products the breakup of the loan book as of september 30 2023 is as follows wholesale mortgage wholesale mortgage constitutes 50% of our loan book which is approximately 7900 crores registering a yoy increase of 8% bespoke financing loan book stood at about 2726 crores which is approximately 17% of the loan book bespoke financing book has declined by 29% year on year direct lending which is lending to retail and hni customers the capital markets loan book constitutes 6% of the total loan book at approximately 963 crores this loan book has registered a decline of 16% the retail mortgage loan book constitutes 15% and stood at 2288 crores this loan book registered a yoy growth of 64% indirect retail loan book the financial institutions loan book comprises 12% of our total loan book at approximately 1927 crores under this loan book we are taking indirect exposure to retail customers so overall wholesale loan book stood at 67% direct retail loan book stood at 21% and indirect retail constitutes 12% of the total loan book this loan book does not include the sebi margin trade financing book of approximately 1200 crores which is under the platform aws business coming to asset quality the gross npa ratio of the lending businesses is at 4.8% net npa at 2.3% and sma2 at 0.5% as of september 30 2023 the pre covid loan book stood at rupees 713 crores which is 4% of the total loan book as of september 30 this book used to be 1571 crores as of march 31 2023 out of the pre covid loan book of 713 crores 61% is in the npa bucket and 2% in the sma2 bucket the dcco book stood at about 605 crores as of september 30 2023 on leverage and liability on a consolidated basis our debt to equity stood at 1.5 times as of september 30 during the half year we raised approximately 1400 crores through long term borrowings our liability profile is diversified to also include insurance companies pension employee and provident funds our borrowing comprises of 77% from long term sources and 23% from short term sources coming to our segments the first segment is our integrated investment bank the investment bank does a lot more than just pure play investment banking the integrated investment bank focuses on all our institutional corporate government and ultra high net worth clients it includes investment banking institutional equities private wealth pms fixed income private equity funds balance sheet financing as well as our international operations within investment banking it includes the equity capital markets private equity debt capital markets as well as the advisory businesses for the half year ended september 2023 the segment had a revenue of 886 crores profit before tax of 319 crores and a profit after tax of approximately 250 crores which is an increase of 27% year on year the roe and roa from these segments were at 18% and 6.4% respectively for quarter 2 fy24 the segment had a revenue of 495 crores pbt of 184 crores and a pat of 142 crores which is an increase of 51% year on year during first half fy24 private wealth and pms businesses have been demerged into jm financial limited and have become a part of the investment bank segment our private wealth which caters to ultra high net worth individuals has an aum of approximately 60300 crores an increase of 5% year on year the second segment is mortgage lending which includes our wholesale and retail mortgage businesses 
होल सेल इंक्लूड कंस्ट्रक्शन फाइनेंस प्रोजेक्ट लोन लोन अगेंस्ट सिक्योरिटी एज वेल एज स्ट्रक्चर फाइनेंस रिटेल मॉडगेजेज इंक्लूड आर अफोर्डेबल होम लोन स्मॉलर टिकेट लोन अगेंस्ट प्रॉपर्टी एम एस एम ई एज वेल एज एडुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन लोन फॉर द हाफ इयर एंड एट सेप्टेंबर थर्टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री दी मॉडगेज लैंडिंग सेगमेंट रिपोर्टेड नेट रेवेन्यूज ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड एंड नाइन्टी वन करोर विद अ प्री प्रोविजनिंग ऑपरेटिंग प्रॉफिट ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड एंड एट करोर प्रोविजन फॉर फर्स्ट हाफ स्टूड एट अबाउट टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी करोर कंपेयर टू रुपीज नाइन्टी फाइव करोर इन फर्स्ट हाफ एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स फॉर दिस सेगमेंट स्टूड एट फोर्टी एट करोर एंड प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स पोस्ट नॉन कंट्रोलिंग इंटरेस्ट स्टूड एट फिफ्टीन करोर इन क्यू टू एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर आर नेट रेवेन्यू एंड प्री प्रोविजनिंग प्रॉफिट स्टूड एट रुपीज वन नाइन्टी सेवन करोर एंड रुपीज वन फिफ्टी फाइव करोर रिस्पेक्टिवली प्रोविजन फॉर क्वार्टर टू एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर स्टूड एट रुपीज हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी सेवन करोर कंपेयर टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री करोर इन क्यू वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर प्रॉफिट बिफोर टैक्स एट रुपीज ट्वेंटी एट करोर एंड पोस्ट नॉन कंट्रोलिंग इंटरेस्ट स्टूड एट सिक्स करोर रिस्पेक्टिवली on the retail mortgages business we have built a very granular retail mortgage loan book of approximately 1500 crores across 13000 customers with an average ticket size of 11 lakhs carrying an average yield of 13.1% and a loan to value of 57% our book is spread across 9 9 states and 105 branches on the wholesale side the loan book has increased from 9293 crores as on 30th june 2023 to 9711 crores as of september 30 2023 our third segment is a combination of our distressed credit business as well as the alternative credit business this includes largely our real our asset reconstruction business On the distressed credit business, our AUM increased by 33% year on year to rupees 15,114 crores. This AUM is well diversified into multiple sectors, and for the half year ended September 2023, the segment had net revenues of 102 crores with a PBT of 48 crores. Profit after tax post non-controlling interest from this segment stood at rupees 25 crores. Gross debt to equity stood at 1.7 times for this segment. In Q2 FY24, our net revenue stood at 37 crore. Profit before tax at rupees 18 crore, and profit after tax post non-controlling interest at rupees 10 crore, respectively. The fourth segment is platform AWS. The business is completely focused on providing an integrated investment platform for individual clients of the company. It comprises of asset management, wealth management, and securities, which we call as AWS. this platform will be digitally focused we are in an investment phase as of now for both the asset management as well as the digital businesses and the financials reflect the investments made in these areas for the half year ended september 30 2023 the platform aws business segment reported revenues of rupees 413 crore with a profit before tax of rupees 23 crore profit after tax post non controlling interest for this segment stood at rupees 18 crores in q2 fy24 our revenue stood at rupees 238 crores profit before tax at rupees 11 crore and pat post non controlling interest at rupees 9 crore we operate through our own branches and franchises we have been growing the franchise network and as of 30th september it stood at 814 locations across 222 cities our elite wealth business caters to affluent clients and we have increased the aum there to about 1466 crores demonstrating a growth of 27% year on year and this business is likely to grow much faster our retail wealth business which predominantly deals with retail customers through a network of over 7000 independent financial distributors recorded a steady growth of 19% year on year and the aum stood at rupees 26414 crores the closing aum for our mutual fund business stood at about 4057 crores during the quarter we crossed the milestone of 4000 crore aum out of the aum of 4057 crores equity schemes contribute approximately 1780 crores we are actively expanding our engagement with partners through innovative approaches 
resulting in increased participation from the distributor community. With this, I would like to conclude and we are happy to take any questions. Over to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Rushab Shah from O3 Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Rushab, go ahead. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. If you look at our wholesale book on slide 18, pre COVID book is nearly 713 crores, and out of it, 60% is NPA, which is 420 crores. So our, our GNPA is nearly 7.2% of the loan book of 9,711 crores. So roughly 300 crores is GNPA from loans disbursed, disbursed after COVID. So assuming that we have disbursed 9,000 crores post COVID is not the high, not the high of NPA high around 3% on post COVID book. Would it be, would it be the right understanding, sir? No, that's not the right understanding. Because post COVID, we don't have any NPAs in our real estate book. But I will have uh, Nishit and Gagan clarify to you in person. Okay, okay. And so my uh, second question is, our current loan book is majorly disbursed post COVID. How much of these loans would be with players who were our customers pre COVID? And how many are new customers? Secondly, till, till two Secondly, till two quarters back, Ahmedabad was an important portion of our book, more, which is uh, more than 5%. And then in this quarter, it is not there. Why so, sir? Yeah. The Ahmedabad question is easy. We had exposure to Adani property, which has become zero. They have prepaid the entire loan. And uh, therefore, the uh, Ahmedabad number is zero. And on the question of uh, how many accounts are new accounts versus old accounts, I think... Uh, I don't have an exact answer, but we'll get you an exact answer. But my my guesstimate, which should be a very close answer, that almost 50% of the accounts we've lent to will be accounts who've been with us, and almost 50% will be new accounts, roughly 50-50. But we will we will get you that answer and uh, communicate it to you. Okay, okay. Now we stated that the intensity of competition is high in wholesale business. Yeah. What are the segments? where we are seeing high competition and it seems that the competitive intensity has suddenly increased as we did not hear from the last many quarters from you. Yeah, so what we've been seeing is the last couple of, last six months specifically when our team has been trying to uh, engage and grow the book, we've been seeing some competitive intensity on rates. So people have been sort of... Uh, uh, been aggressive on at what yields they are able to close uh, real estate loans. This is specifically for the wholesale market segment. We have seen a couple of AAA NBFC players who are uh, very focused on the segment and are growing, and there are a couple of banks also who are growing. So even though the competitive intensity has increased, uh, with our stated objective that we grow the wholesale the lending book at 20%, I think we should be able to meet uh, that stated objective. Our cleanup also is completed. All of our provisions are in place. So hopefully we should be able to grow the wholesale real estate book at anywhere between 18 to 20 percent over the next few years on an annual basis. Uh, the challenge we are facing, as I mentioned even earlier in one of my calls, is that the sales cycle in real estate continues to be extremely strong. So our, uh, our sanction to disbursement ratio actually has dropped in the last couple of quarters. Uh, what happens is if sales is very strong, then us being a large real estate book, which is focused in residential, um, you know, the residential uptick in terms of construction finance slows down because money from sales is basically flowing in faster and stronger and taking care of the construction requirements. 
So that continues to be a challenge. And over and above that, last six months, we have seen competitive intensity increase in terms of rates offered. Another reason why we could be seeing competitive intensity increases because we are also graduating. When I talked about roughly 50% of customers being uh, new customers for us on the real estate mortgage side, uh, we are trying to go to a better quality set of customers. So when we're going to a better quality set of customers, there are more competitive players who are lending to those customers. Okay. So the two small questions. Can you give the average ticket size per loan and number of relationships we have in the current loan book on the wholesale side of the business? Yeah. So, huh? yeah, so we have roughly 65 relationships and the average size should be approximately 130 crores, 135 crores. Okay. Okay. But okay. At, just, to, just to tell you, at peak, we have had more than 125 to 130 relationships. Hmm. Yes, that's right, sir. One last question: 20% of our ARC book is real estate. What percentage of it is composed from our own JM Credit Solutions loans, which turned NPA? Uh, again, it should be roughly 50%. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much for answering. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Pallav Garg from Star Health. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good morning, uh, sir. Uh, my question is uh, for the mortgage book. The gross NPA has been kind of on an uh, uptrend. So, and uh, whereas we have seen from the so first quarter, uh, there is a steep fall in the SMA2 uh, percentages. Yes. So if you can elaborate on those. Yeah, so part of the SMA2 has been resolved and it is normalized and some of it has also been taken off our books. And some part of the SMA2 has slipped into NPA and therefore the NPA numbers have gone up. But as I had mentioned on my last call that uh, we expect that this year uh, the NPA number has peaked for uh, the real estate finance book. We have only one SME account which we are focused on and uh, hopefully that will also get resolved by March. Uh, and then I think by next year you will see these numbers only going lower. Sure. And um, all, of this, all of this has happened because the six months was the maturity period of our restructured book, uh, a BCC or book which was given after the Delta wave. So it is all of those accounts which are not all, but a large part of those accounts which are not being able to uh, adhere in pay principle and therefore they've got into a uh, NPA cycle. That doesn't mean our recovery efforts are not on. Our recovery efforts are quite strong. And uh, we should, fingers crossed, hopefully be able to recover significant amount of uh, this money over the next uh, six to eight quarters. One fundamental change is that across the board, whether it's our ARC or whether it is a real estate lending business, uh, whatever estimated recovery timelines we've had in the past when we started the business, we now we model that the recovery timelines are a lot longer. Um, so if we had assumed in the past that a recovery from a sick unit or a, or a distressed real estate project could have been 12 to 18 months, now we factor in almost uh, 24 to 36 months of recovery period. Uh, when we factor that recovery period, two things happen. We have to expand the uh, liability side of our balance sheet and that's what we have done if you see we in credit solutions specifically we have a lot of long-term borrowing now uh, and uh, second we have to factor in uh, the rating and the quality of the buyer we are lending to uh, and the spread at which we will be doing the loan considering that if we have to recover we're going to take a longer timeline to recover so all those changes have, have already been uh, affected in our model for the last two years sure and uh, if you can talk a little bit about your existing DCC portfolio. Uh, I believe uh, there's still 605 crores in the DCC yes, portfolio. Exactly. So in the DCC book, full, full efforts of recovery are on. Some uh, are negotiated deals. Some places we have basically uh, started surface action. Some places we are starting MCLT action. Uh, so from our experience of the ARC, we are not preferring to go down NCLT, we are preferring to going down surfaces. But almost on each and every account, barring one account where there is a negotiated transaction which is hoping to get closed uh, this Diwali, uh, 
I think everything else uh, is under process for the coming. Uh, the book is highly concentrated between Chennai and Mumbai. All other geographies are okay. Bangalore is okay, NCR is okay, uh, but it's Mumbai, uh, Chennai, and one asset in Pune. So it is largely these three centers. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lan of Chirag Surekha. From UTI Mutual Fund, please go ahead. Yes. So just on the follow-up on the asset quality question, so on the asset quality front, the reduction in uh, SMA2, which you mentioned, so are these accounts or have these accounts uh, shifted to normal or have they gone out of the book or are they or a large part is still sitting in stage two for some reason? Uh, no. So some of them have normalized and uh, some of them have shifted to uh, NDA. And uh, one or two of the accounts have been refinanced. Okay, so not a, um, a large part or a good part will not be sitting in stage two or any delinquency bucket? No, no, they are not. Okay, and these sale, uh, these accounts which have been sale or refinanced, there we have, uh, even in stage, uh, in, even in stage two SMA account, they were able to get refinance, uh, the developers. Yeah, because what happens if it is taken over by a stronger developer or a stronger developer is doing a partnership in terms of a DM model, then people refinance. Sure, sir. That's it from Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rajat Saitya from I thought PMS, please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, on this, uh, this is your book of 600 crores. Uh, did we say... Uh, your voice is not coming clearly. Is it, is it any better now? I can, hear, I can hear him clearly, don't worry. Okay. okay. On this 600 crores of this is your book, uh, did we say that uh, we are comfortable now? Uh, and what gives us the comfort? No, sorry. Uh, so we, are, we are comfortable because all our recovery efforts are on. Uh, and uh, we have taken provisions... Uh, you know, based on our ECL model. We've also increased our provisions slightly because of uh, RBI wanting some comfort on higher provisions compared to where we are comfortable. Um, so I think at this stage, uh, you know, it is really about focusing on recovery and uh, making sure that we get the 600 crores back into the system as cash. And uh, by what time, do, do we have any timelines? I mean, uh, by, by what time? As I do we said, my earlier timeline when we used to do the business I'm talking about when we started, used to always feel that a 12 to 18 month timeline is good enough for recovery. But I would be very cautious to give you a, such an aggressive timeline. I would imagine that these timelines now could be stretched to two years, maybe even two and a half years. Because in general, recovery processes are taking a lot of time. Uh, we are facing that in our ARC also. Uh, uh, you know, I mentioned that in my press release and even on my last call that uh, most of our assets through NCLT or any form of litigation, the recovery timelines have got, uh, you know, very, very stretched, uh, which is impacting our earnings. Uh, so, therefore, a uh, similar thing will be followed for the DCCO book. I would, not, uh, I would not imagine that all of this will get recovered over the next 12 months, and I would imagine a two to three year scenario for recovery. So, for ease of your assumption, I think you shouldn't just assume that in the 600 crore, if you have to model it, assume 200 crores in year two, 200 crores in year three, and 200 crores in year four. That would be a very simple and easy way to model it. Sure. And for the DCCO 600 crore book, how much provisioning do we have on, on those assets, 600 crores? Most of our provisioning is on the DCCO assets only. I mean, on those 600 crores specifically, on those assets that, we, that are still standard, I think. Yeah, so I think there it's roughly five and it's 31 point, one second, I'm just getting the numbers. So Maybe we understand this, you know, this is your book, our provisioning is roughly 190 crores, which is roughly 30%. So even on those 600 crores, which are, uh, which we still, I mean, we have 190 crores of provisioning. Yes, 190 crores is almost 30% of the provisioning. And okay. uh, 
and you don't expect them to slip to NPA. That is the understanding, correct? No, no. Some of them are already NPA. Oh, some of them are already NPA. Oh, yeah, yeah. How much? Yeah. How much of them are NPA? Almost half. Okay, so the 300 crores. What are the chances of them slipping into NPA? So what is NPA? 300 crores. Yeah, that is significant portion of the provisioning is on that number. Okay, and the known NPA numbers uh, will have very low provisioning right now. Absolutely, because you know, so take it, take it, take it. I'll give you a simple example. So if 600 crores, 300 crores, three, roughly 343 crore is NPA, and the remaining is not NPA. So you should assume that on the NPA we'll have at least 40% provisioning, and the rest will be provisioning on the non-NPA. Sure, sure. And one SMA two account you mentioned. That we are working on uh, that is worth 20 crores going by the numbers that we have or SMA2. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Cool. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vivek Kumar from Best Pals Research. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, my first question is on mortgage. Uh, given that uh, uh, now we have upgraded our the way we are selecting our clients and also uh, company because other NBF region banks are addressing the same segment of better clients and sales cycle financing the or customers financing the construction and other parts of the real estate uh, whatever opportunity we have. How should we start thinking about uh, ability to grow the loan book and uh, can you explain more because now company like all customers and even competition and we ourselves are upgrading our collection of customers. So, so how should we now think that any change in assumptions that you had post COVID and the way you are going to, are we trying to increase our ratings and what we are doing for it? So if you can throw more light on how we should think about this mortgage business, wholesale mortgage. Yeah. So I'll tell you, if you see our efforts over the last two, three years, uh, we've actually diversified away from wholesale mortgage a lot. Uh, we do not want to grow wholesale mortgage more than 20% a year. Uh, we have enough of firepower in terms of uh, capital, in terms of people, in terms of understanding of markets to be able to grow wholesale mortgage at 20%. Our uh, other segments like retail mortgages, our MSME book, our financials, the financial institution financing have grown significantly. Uh, they will grow faster. Uh, I imagine retail mortgage will grow at 30%. Uh, the financial institution financing business will grow between 20 and 25 percent, and MSME lab will grow at 35 percent. So I think these books will grow faster over time, which will help us achieve a much better retail and wholesale mix uh, in the mortgage space as well as the overall loan book space. Uh, our capital market book also has performed very well in the last six months, but that is a cyclical book. Uh, if markets were to turn, uh, you know, uh, negative and not do well, then there is a huge possibility of that book being flat or coming down. Our bespoke book is extremely sort of, uh, bespoke book will never grow beyond a certain point because we use that book largely for distribution. Uh, we take on our books and we uh, basically sell down to other NBFCs and AIFs and that book actually works very closely with our investment bank. So I think this is a broad book. You can expect uh, uh, good growth in across all segments, but there will be more growth on the on the retail asset side. So mortgage, you are saying you have enough firepower, and even with these assumptions of a very great sales cycle, because in bad times we will uh, not have a great credit, and in good times financing is coming from the customer. So you are still confident of 20% growth given all these conditions. Yeah, that's why I said that around 18, 20% growth should be achievable from our base over the next two to three years. Uh, also, the see, it, it, we are also trying to move in wholesale mortgage over the last two three years to a better customer, a better uh, sort of counterparty who we want to lend to. So incrementally, we don't want to do business in uh, in the high teens. We want to focus on business, you know, in the low teens. And the comparative intensity in the low teens is always going to be higher compared to high teens. But we just think that. From what we have seen in the last five years, it is not worth doing the high teens business because uh, the risk element is extremely high and the recovery pace is very, very slow. And therefore, you're just better off, you know, banking on a better client and lending at 13, 14 versus trying to lend at 17, 18. 
But it's also when, when it comes to investment banking, uh, uh, where, what part of the, I know you, nobody knows what is going to happen in terms of market, but uh, what kind of growth rate can we, because you, in one of the interviews for the, you told what cycle always, to cycle. I've always maintained that <clears throat> India's capital markets are going to grow phenomenally and <clears throat> at least the last 10 years we've been proven right. So the way we look at investment bank is that every four years, the investment bank should double its profit. That's the way we focus. And that means that they should have 18 to 20% growth. And you know, I'm very pleased to report that on the investment bank, we have actually reported a 20% ROE last quarter. We've reported 18% ROE for the first half. And uh, our numbers are extremely strong. Our pipeline is unbelievably strong across all our products, whether it's equity, whether it's debt, whether it's private equity, whether it's advisory, M&A. Uh, and I think the traction that we are seeing is uh, perhaps, uh, you know, one of the best in the life, lifetime of the firm. So very happy. And the cross-sell of all of those, you know, customer relationships coming in into private wealth management, into PMF, into bespoke, is very, very strong. So when I look at the integrated investment bank, I don't think there is anybody in India who's trying to build this. Uh, I think we are building it in an in a extremely strategic manner. And I think we will be for the next coming years, one of the most successful firms uh, building a true uh, blue blooded investment bank uh, in India, which is an Indian investment bank. So any plans once it reaches 1000 crore kind of profit to uh, merge non-lending and lending business, uh, non-lending and lending separately like that, or you're not thinking of those things any, any of those things now? It is very difficult to break up lending and non-lending in the investment bank. Yeah, if you see, got it, got it, got it. No, no, if you look at, if you look at our uh, uh, tab A, okay, yes. where oh, oh. we have uh, given some details, if you oh. focus on page 14, there is something called franchise enhancing oh. financing. No, no, so got it. I, I, I think better, the better question would be investment bank and other things and lending, the other part of the yeah, lending. Correct. See, investment that. bank, we don't increase our loan book. Our loan book has been around four to 5,000 crores for the last five, six quarters because we only originate to sell down to customers, right? We are not, we are not, yes, we are yes, not yes. hungry for uh, yield. We are hungry for fees. We are hungry for the fee-based business. Got it, got it, got it. And so if, you see trading and if you see our trading and investment portfolio, it is significant and it's very liquid. We've got cash of almost 700 crores. We've got GSEX and AAA bonds investments of almost 900 crores. Uh, we've got a significant amount of investments in REITs because we feel that counter-cyclically it earns a good yield of 8, 8.5% and, and can give you further capital appreciation of 5 to 7% over the next 2 to 3 years. So, you know, we, we, we look at this business very strategically from a lending Trading, investment, fees, commission, and brokerage business. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow-up question is from Ryan of Pallavgar from Star Health. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, just a follow-up question from me. My side. Yes. Uh, the, uh, how, how should we think about the impairment of the, the provisioning levels uh, going forward? It has been um, high for a couple of quarters now. So, yeah. sure. and, and like you said, that it's uh, being something which is uh, for the comfort of the RBI. Right. No, so I, let me break this question up across across our lending entities. Right. Uh, I think we are very comfortable now in the provisions for JM Financial Credit Solutions. I think we have increased our provisions partly uh, because RBI felt that uh, we should be more conservative and we completely respect the views of the regulator, and even though internally we were comfortable at a provision of 40%, we increased provisions to 53% on the credit solution side. Uh, on products, we are we are very well provided. Uh, on JM Financial home loans, we are very well provided. On the ARC side specifically, uh, I think we will have challenges over the next three years. Most of the resolutions that we are seeing, we are seeing uh, lower realizations than models. <laughs> In addition to that, we have a lot of assets which are completing uh, eight years, seven and eight year cycles. And as per the RBI regulations, we compulsorily have to make provisions if we've not been able to resolve, uh, you know, many of those issues. And the resolution timeline has been uh, expanded quite significantly, especially for all the assets which are in NCLT or are in litigation. Uh, so I would, 
uh, the way to explain is over the next three years, uh, investors should look at how much of a book value hit will we have going forward because of provisions. Uh, we think the book value per share hit at JM Financial Limited from the NBFC business will be extremely limited and it should not be more than 50 pesa per share. And But from the ARC, I think the hit can be anywhere between 4 rupees to 5 rupees per share over the next three years. Uh, the timelines of this are difficult to ascertain uh, and therefore I would cautiously ask all the investors to model an adjusted book value for JM Financial when they are valuing JM Financial and just reduce our book value by five to five and a half rupees uh, for the provisions that will come up. As I said, 50 pesa to maybe one rupee maximum, maximum from the NBFC over the next, NBFCs over the next three years and between four rupees to five rupees for the ARC again over the next three years. Uh, we've had some conversations with many of our lenders and investors that why don't we just upfront these provisions and uh, get done with it. Uh, we are also evaluating the same, but it's tricky because we also have a lot of upsides in our ARC. We also have upsides in the provisions of many of the assets we've made in our NBFCs, which will come over the next three years. Um, and it is difficult to ascertain which quarter or which year will we be getting those upsides versus when we make the provisions. So we are very closely looking at the same. And one thing I can assure you is that our NBFC current, current provision cycling is complete and we will finish the, uh, the remaining provision, uh, which is a very, very small number in the NBFC that should not be totaling to more than 25 crores over the next six months. And uh, for the ARC, it is over the next three years, and the impact of that would be anywhere between four to five rupees on this value. And this is not, not including any upside we can get from any case which is under litigation where we have not booked any income. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, this is just a clarification. This is for, uh, this is a cumulative, so we can model it uh, either on a... Exactly. So I think it's very simple because, you know, people keep getting confused. I was thinking, a great question you asked, how do I just address it? I just, just adjust the book value straight up by five and a half rupees between these two. Look at that book value over the next three years and see if you do 10 rupees of EPS, say, in two years. I think it's quite clear, uh, you, know, you know, where the PE ratio should be, where the ROE should be. Uh, and uh, if you're looking at book growth of around... 18 to 20 percent in wholesale mortgages. We are looking at investment banking doubling profit in four years, uh, and we are looking at uh, book growth of 30 percent in our retail business, 25 percent in our FIFG business. Uh, I think you can very easily model, uh, you know, where the EPS will be, and uh, you know what sort of growth will be delivered by the firm over the next three years. And you just adjust five and a half rupees upfront into the book value, so you can easily model and uh, value JM over the next three years. Yeah, and um, anything you can, um, I mean, can you if, you, if you can elaborate on the, your lending to the other financial institutions, so how has been the experience and any trends that you know? So the experience has been very, very good, but we are becoming a bit cautious. We have reduced, in the last six months, we have reduced the lending to fintechs. Uh, microfinance is strong, vehicle finance is strong, gold loans is strong. Uh, the underlying recoveries from these portfolios and the modeling that we are doing in the uh, risk analysis we are doing continues to, to be very robust. It remains very robust. So no sort of challenges as of now. Uh, our objective is to granularize that loan book even more. We started off by doing larger loans to higher rated companies. And increasingly now we are doing smaller and smaller loans to lower rated companies. Uh, we do not lend to any NBFC which is rated below triple B. Uh, and we lend all the way to double A. Uh, in fact, the double NBFCs, we cross-sell our investment bank because we do public issue of bonds. We do private placement of debt for the same. We also do equity issuances, whether it's a QIP or whether it's a, a private equity trade. So it's a full service given to all the financial institutions. Uh, we are hoping that our 2,000 crore book uh, in the next 18 months will be closer to, to a three, three and a half thousand crore book. Uh, fingers crossed, we should be able to achieve this kind of growth. Sure. Thank you. That is all for my. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of the Ruesh Sangvi from Prosperity. Please go ahead. 
yeah uh, a great uh, session sir after 6 months we get this opportunity so uh, sir one thing why can't we move to a quarterly con call i mean just as a regular suggestion uh, that is number 1 uh yeah. um uh, second is uh, about uh let's say when we see the mortgage business currently what is happening is uh, over the last 5 years we have uh, we are moving uh hello so the line for the participant drop we move on to the next participant next so question this is bring him back bring the participant back so wherever you possible we can move on but bring him back yes sir sure Next question is from Lion of Manoj Dua from Geometric Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, in the past, when we were used to talk about wholesale uh, mortgage in the bad time, and there was thing that if we, when the good time will come, we can just book, increase our book in just two years. Now we have changed the strategy uh, for for the right reasons. uh so how can we look after when the things are a little bit mature when the book is increased at 18 20% with the right client what kind of rois and roe you can look in this business now yeah so first first of all let me tell you uh and completely honestly and transparently i can actually double the book in 2 years there is no problem i only have to reduce the interest rate so demand for money is not a problem the only challenge is that uh on the we want to maintain two things we want to maintain a higher book in construction finance and a lower book in structured and land which is what we've always done even pre ilfs now if you look at the pre ilfs period from almost 2013 to 2018 sales were very slow and therefore the disbursements were very high a quarterly disbursement rate was very high on a construction finance side we're just facing a challenge because sales are very strong So we are again we are absolutely in the exact opposite market of what was there pre RFS, right? So the market just needs to normalize a bit. Uh, but frankly, it is not. The market is still very strong. I guess if the stock markets in India are doing well, making a lot of money, there is a lot of wealth effect, and we are seeing that in the geographies that we are operating, particularly Bombay, Bangalore, Pune, and Delhi. Uh, and you know, I I personally feel that. uh in some of the places the price rises are quite ridiculous and today to be able to do a loan uh where you know something was selling at 80000 rupees a square foot and suddenly prices have moved to 1 lakh 20 or even 1 lakh 40000 square feet right bandra for example it is very very difficult to underwrite a new project because we are underwriting that project assuming that price for the next 3 to 4 years the price may not hold even if the price holds the velocity of sales may not hold so we are just being extremely cautious with our capital i mean if we just take a view that no we want to grow the loan book it is actually very very doable now let me give you an example if if the rate was 1 lakh or 90000 or 80000 and developers wanted money we could have disbursed 1000 crores in western suburbs in mumbai alone literally which you know we've chosen not to do now coming back to your numbers question i think we will get to a anywhere between 3 to 4% roa on the wholesale mortgage piece and jain financial current solutions because we are adding a bit of uh, diversified uh, you know corporate uh, las as well as uh, fifg that roa could be closer to 3 and not closer to 4 so say assume 3 to 3 and a half and our endeavor would be in the business to take leverage back to 2 and a half three times over the next 3 years so if we do that it will be a 14 to 15% roa business versus an 18 to 19% roa business uh which it used to be pre ilfs i think 14 to 15% is still a very strong number uh and we are very well capitalized very well positioned to deliver that but uh, you know all our learnings from uh, covid all our learnings from ilfs have been priced into our models um, and we will be very careful in terms of uh, who we give larger exposures to we'll be very careful in terms of figuring out if something were to go wrong how long would it actually take for us to get our money back uh these things are very important um, and uh, that is priced into the risk models and could be another reason why uh the growth rates will be in at 17 to 18 or 19 and not 20 21 22 and therefore the guidance of 18 to 20% okay i uh, understand that's the progressive management how to uh, do the strategy and i respect that uh, so my second question is like you uh, saying some area prices are very high is it only on some micro market or across because i am coming if you believe that the prices will correct
can our current book can also be little bit effective even if it is a, a, a conservative because the yes. price fall can be high very very good question so that is why if you see i built in i built in a 50 basis points uh, for a real estate book of further provisioning that may happen over the next 3 years it is all from the wholesale mortgage side in a book value but having said that i feel i feel that risk is very low today because the sales cycle of our projects is already very strong and therefore the committed receivables are very strong uh, so we have to be very careful underwriting today what we underwrote see if you see our pre covid book a pre covid book is completely changed hands so pre covid performing book is down to zero so the entire current book that we have which is performing very well is a new book which has been built in the last 3 years and that book is performing extremely well we don't even have a single like you know zero plus i mean everybody is current in that book and that's because the sales cycle is strong and projects are being delivered but that is already sort of mid cycle no because i've been lending on that book for 3 years so in fi 24 fi 25 mid cycle and it comes to end cycle in 26 27 what i underwrite now right has to go through 24 25 26 27 at high prices and that we have to be very careful another thought in our mind is on the wholesale side we have to be very careful of a major event like elections do we want to take any major exposures when we have one of the most important events for macro economics in the country which is going to be the national election so we will be very careful till may in terms of how much money do we put out on the wholesale side. and uh, if the election result is is good favorable and uh, there is a proper stability in the country then i think we have a clear five year window to grow the book even more aggressively so all of these things are in our mind um, and uh, so to your question current book i i barely see any risk but i'm talking about a 50 basis points sort of uh, book value adjustment if things were to you know go awry uh, but i i really doubt it i really doubt it and do not forget that we will also have recoveries against that so when i gave my guidance about 5 rupees adjustment to book value i am not baking in any 1 rupee of recovery in that guidance so if you are good you do a good job at recovery then that 5 5 and a half rupees uh, adjustment a large part of it may not even happen but i don't want to promise it to everyone as i said i want everyone to make the adjustment and then look at our numbers okay so uh, that 5 rupees adjustment is majorly because of the arst business am i right in yeah, this as i said as i said 50 basis points to maximum 1 rupee on the jm financial credit solution side over the next 3 years and uh, 4 to 5 rupees on the arc side and we hold a uh, 50% stake around 50% stake in that arc business can you quantify in terms of value what will be adjusted with that because it seems to be very high value even with 50% uh, stake in our arc business yeah our ownership is 58% uh, okay so yes if we have all of those delays that will be a high number in the arc business Okay now how do you see ARC business in the future with the kind of uh, not so good uh, experience uh, in the last few years and how do you putting more capital deployment uh, in there or not yeah so what we are doing two things as i mentioned last time on my call we are reducing the amount of wholesale we are doing in the ARC in the increasing retail if you see the new portfolios that we've added 85% of the new portfolios that we've added in the ARC are all retail portfolios and i must report that those portfolios are doing exceedingly well and there is a significant and a good chance that they will on extremely good irrs and will also get repaid before time so our idea is that we were a 100% wholesale business in our arc pre ilfs uh, and we want to move that to 50 50 50% wholesale 50% retail second we do not want to do 100% purchases and aggregations of assets we want to limit our participation in assets to 25% and 75% of sr issuances um so we've taken very effective steps over the last 2 uh, years also on the arc uh, but you know unfortunately we have two or three assets which have been sticky and the assets have been hurt very badly in covid many of the plants had to be shut down uh, we saw a crazy amount of inflation in uh, input prices which has hurt some of the assets in two of the assets we have pli schemes and you know buyers are wanting to pay 25 to 30 to 35% lower than what we think is fair value or residual value 
and therefore it's become difficult to close the transaction. So we may actually have to bite the bullet and maybe sell some of those assets at lower prices. Um, and uh, so a lot of that brunt, uh, you know, is, uh, is something that we are dealing with, but we are quite confident that uh, the new book is doing well. Um, you know, the large part of the attraction to us to grow the ARC is still in retail assets. We see a big move in retail MSME. There has been tremendous amount of lending that has happened uh, that could result uh, in some NPAs maybe two years, three years down the line. So we will focus on making sure that we have the right partnerships uh, which can help us recover on retail and MSME assets. And the current experience of the same has been pretty strong. Okay. Thanks for the last one question. I think it's very important. Uh, how can we demerge this uh, wholesale mortgage from this business? Uh, let me tell you why I'm coming from that. Because wholesale mortgage business is creating every time a big event because real estate is a big purchase. From 2016, we are seeing one event we are talking on for, we are watching this event. It was GST, RERA, IBC, then uh, COVID, wave one, wave two, wave three, new Russia, Ukraine war, now this election has come up. So I understand where it is a concave landing is a concave thing and it create, uh, we have to watch for the event. Because that uh, we are not getting at all some valuation in investment banking, which I believe in going forward as the uh, Indian economy go up, it has to be structural at some point of time. So what's your view on that? I think it's a very, very good question. Uh, that question has crossed my mind many times. Uh, and uh, since you have raised it uh, on a call, I will definitely take it to my board and discuss the same. Thank you, Mr. Flat. Thank you. Next question is from the line of the Ruvesh Sangvi from Prospero Tree. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I got disconnected. So my no, no uh, problem. We made sure we get, we got you back. Yeah, thank you. So uh, my question related to the overall lending side is that let's say currently we are doing uh, 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 lending to other financial institutions. In the past, it was IPO. In, in uh, previously to that, it was pure large ticket mortgage. Uh, you know, but. Uh, are we learning to become more consistent in in the business uh, uh, strategy? Where I'm coming from is there, there are many NBFCs which have got created in the last five to 10 years and some of them have really scaled it well. But the good part about some of those is that the line of activity that they chose is a little bit continual. Whereas what will happen is for us, for, uh, let's say if we go grow from 2000 crore to 4,000 crores in the financial institution space. The problem is that something will go wrong at some other point and then we will have to scale it back. So on that higher base, that will again hurt us uh, three years later that, you know, then we'll have to give reasons on why are we be growing that business. That, that, is a, that is a great question. Sorry, finish, finish. Yeah, so, so it, I'm just trying to understand that after a decade of uh, here and there, uh, you know, touching multiple aspects of financing, uh, financial, uh, uh, I mean, lending side, are we uh, getting clearer in our mind that, okay, this is the way forward on how to build the uh, lending business because we are clearly not into the B2C except for the uh, retail, uh, uh, I mean, the home lending side. Yeah, yeah. But I, I got the question. Let me, yeah. let me address it. Yeah. So, if you go back to even uh, five years or six years back in most of our interactions on the analyst calls, we've always maintained that wholesale mortgage should actually grow at 20%. We've never discussed a growth in wholesale mortgage over and above that. And today we continue to believe that wholesale mortgage, if it is grown at a reasonable rate, it's a very, very good business to be in with very good cash flows. And we will continue doing the same. Now, why are we adding some of the other businesses, right? Bespoke is a business we always had. It was a structured finance, this structured finance and corporate last business, which we've renamed Bespoke, and we've integrated that much more into our investment bank. So that is not new. Our last business we've always had, last business is booming today because the capital markets are booming. So that business also is very strong. IPO funding, we were very strong, but unfortunately, the regulators have closed it down. It has nothing to do with us. For example, if IPO funding had not been closed down, we would have reported 200 crores or more profit in the last six months. But it's a regulatory action. I mean, we've seen a boom in IPOs last six months where our funding book has not been able to participate because of the regulator's action. 
So that is uh, that is completely regulatory. And you know, who knows? The regulators may change their mind. A uh, lot of HNIs and a lot of retail investors are not investing in IPO because of these allocation rules and because they don't want to take funding without guaranteed allocation. And if that sort of data is appreciated by the regulators, they may actually change their mind and IPO funding may come back as a product and it is an extremely profitable line of business for us. Now coming to FIFG, why did we start FIFG? We realized that we have a lot of cross-selling in our investment bank to do to many of the smaller MBFCs. Smaller NBFCs, if you work with them when they're smaller, there are lots of private equity rounds that the investment banking team can raise for them. They need money. They are happy to pay 12%, 13% kind of IRR to us. Most of their loans are one to two years in nature, and therefore we can afford to borrow short term because the assets are also short term in nature. Many of these are sort of equated monthly installments through which they pay us. So the duration profile of these assets is very, very short, and therefore they are very, very profitable. And we realized we have a brand where many of these NBFCs will want to associate with us and create long-term partnerships just the way we've done with Bajaj Finance, right? We started Bajaj Finance and became our client 22 years ago, almost, you know, in 2020, 2021, or 2002, 2001. And since then, we've done every single financing for them. We've had research first on that company. We've backed them completely. And we've seen the growth they've done. So why not have the same business model with 30 or 40 or 50 smaller NBFCs? So it's a very well thought through plan. And there is a very good case where this book can scale to anywhere between four to 6,000 crores. Also, it diversifies our book. See, we have very low leverage. We have a good balance sheet, good capitalization. We know that wholesale mortgage will not be able to grow more than 18 to 20%. So the idea is how do we use our capital more effectively and generate a much higher ROA on that capital? That's very important, right? Because if we have cross-sell capabilities to every loan we make, then that loan is more profitable and the ROE is going to be much higher with higher ROAs. And that means lower leverage. So that is the strategy across the group. So if you look two, three years forward, it's not that we are exiting any business. We are going to be in wholesale mortgages. We are going to be in FIFG financing. We are going to be in corporate lending. They're going to be in LAS. The thrust that is coming to really grow fast and become big is on the retail assets. We started the HFC exactly six years ago. Uh, and I'm happy to report that for the month of October, just the month of October, they have disbursed 160 crores, right? Which is a phenomenal number, right? And that number I expect with a little bit of more branch expansion going to 120, 125 branches in six months to seven months time will be 200 crores a month. So we're talking about having almost a five to 6,000 crore retail asset book in a, in a two to two and a half year time frame, which is, you know, almost in a decade, we've built almost a billion dollar business, uh, you know, from scratch internally without buying anything. So I think a lot of efforts on strategy, a lot of efforts on execution playing out. We can even discuss uh, our investments in digital asset management. Right? We started investing in asset management two years ago. A lot of people thought that we are foolish. Why are we trying to rebuild our, our mutual fund? Uh, but I'm happy to report that currently, you know, we are more, as we speak, we have more than 2,000 crores in equity assets in our mutual fund. Uh, some of our scheme performances have been top class. Right? And we've hired good, experienced people who in a very mature way are going and building the business from a long-term perspective. Now, so, you know, we are, we, are, we are taking steps in the right direction. We feel the capital markets are still young. They're still very small. There is tremendous growth ahead of them. And the same thing applies to even many niche areas on the lending side, and we will exploit them, and we will create, create a lot of growth opportunities over the next 10 years. Sure. Thank you. And uh, just one question related to the, uh, 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 you know, mortgage lending again. So uh, on the NPA side, suppose, uh, again, I'm not from the financial background uh, and therefore pardon my question. So when we generally hear any of these deals, they are typically 2x on the cover or something of that kind. So do we end up getting and collecting uh, in the recoveries all the interest that is lost and if the covers are for 2x, why do we still end up making the net loss? Yeah, the end of so I'll, that's, a, that's a very, very good question. So let me tell you, this is exactly how we used to think about it five years ago, that if we have two times cover, what is the issue? The problem is 
two times cover you normally get on an account which is paying you high deals right so you always feel safe from a collateral perspective but the borrower rating is not always that high and because the borrower rating is not high what does it mean it means that when stress times come the borrower's ability to extract cash flow from that stipulated two times cover becomes difficult and therefore the realizable cover never actually is two times it's a lot lower and therefore we are finding it safer to do loans with much better quality investor quality developers who have much stronger balance sheets who been sort of uh, have enough of capacity and capital to withstand pressure at 1.6 or 1.7 or 1.8 cover and lend money to them at 13 or 14% then actually look for the two cover transactions where we are trying to lend at 18 to 19% and what our experience has told us in the last 4 5 years is that cover is extremely theoretical if the question comes up on the ability of the developer to execute through stretch times uh and therefore uh, that is a disnormal and that is really that is really the crux and sort of holy grail of the business is how you choose your credit uh you know and many of the uh, places where you get two to even two and a half times cover you know our developers uh, who don't have uh, the uh, the ability or capability uh, to withstand uh, sort of a multi year crisis which we have seen in retail mor- in wholesale mortgages uh, right through ILFS through covid 1 and covid 2 thank you thanks a lot and happy diwali to all happy diwali to all of you thank you thank you very much i now hand the conference over to mr vishal kampani for closing comments Yes uh thank you very much uh, all of you for uh, uh, attending our call uh, especially in the week of Diwali um and uh, you know with this i would like to conclude uh, and uh, i would uh, you know wish everyone a happy diwali and a and a very happy new year uh, and if you all have any further questions or any data that is specifically required uh, on our results on our strategy or any of the uh, Uh, sort of uh, guidance we have given uh, through our call please reach out to our finance team nishad and team will be very happy to take you all through the details thank you thank you on behalf of jm financial limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you